on an all-new Dr. Phil. My husband is hostile. I want to know everything. You trust me. Impulsive. How many times have you been arrested? We're not talking about that. 42 times. He rants and raves. You chased her around the house with a pair of scissors. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional when you held the scissors to her throat. Because you are delusional. I'm just trying to understand your delusions. Your level of arrogance is staggering. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Couples argue from time to time. But Sherry says with her husband Eric, it's either his way or the highway. She says he fusses about everything from how they raise the kids to how she cleans the house. Now, Eric says he likes to run what he calls a tight ship. If his family would just obey his rules, he wouldn't have to yell a little to keep them in line. In the Huh? I can't hear you bitching. You're the only one laying in the bed. You're supposed to quit in your room. But Dad, I want to go somewhere. Dad, I want to go somewhere. Stay in your bed. Well, we started to wonder what else this couple was minimizing. So we did a little digging, and according to police and court documents, Eric has been arrested over 42 times. 15 times for domestic violence alone. But if you listen to Sherry, you would think Eric just needs a little anger management. I'm this. Why? Because you, you judge me. For I'm not judging you. My husband Eric is hostile, impatient, and impulsive. My husband thinks he knows it all. He rants and raves all day long. He you control and you want to be right. You want to know everything. That's your perception. What do you hear me say? You are simply telling me if I rock out is wrong. He's a control freak. He foams at the mouth. You change the structure in the home with the children. It's just friggin' overwhelming. It's irritating as hell. It's definitely Eric's where they're highway. He tells me I'm a miserable bitch. He calls me a pig. He calls me a slob. Nobody wants you. You're fat. You're ugly. You're black. And it doesn't make me feel too good. He gets worked up. He really doesn't run out of breath. I'm gonna speak facts. Facts are, you're 14. You run down. You're gonna do that. That's what you do. That's what your mom does. Keep doing it. Let me know what you're talking about. He's yelling at our oldest daughter. He's upset because the house isn't clean to his expectations. I call them tantrums. And that is exactly what they are. He snatched a dish and he threw it across the room. I've checked out. I've stopped listening. As usual. And then what do we get accomplished here? Nothing. I'm hoping Dr. Phil will be able to see if this is something that's salvageable or if we just need to call it quits. You know, Sherry says she's used to being on the receiving end of Eric's temper tantrums. But now that their daughters are older, she says Eric is taking his aggression out on them, too, and they're scared of him. Now, Eric says Sherry is the one setting the bad example by teaching their daughters to be disobedient. What are these people thinking? What is their agenda? My wife definitely knows how to push my buttons, and I feed right into it. When I argue with my wife, she cuts me off. She totally just cuts me off right up the knees. My daughters see that, too. You all back up mom like she's a God. She is not a God, and she's not end all, be all, go all. She does not know every thing. When I become overwhelmed, my tirades are frustrating, they're aggressive. I want to hit something. Sometimes I'll fake like I'm going to hit a cabinet. Sometimes I'll hit a cabinet. You're just so friggin' aggravating, I swear to God, sometimes. Looking fine. I can be aggravating. Sometimes I'll ball my fist up in aggression and anger. I'll grit my teeth. I have called my wife names in the past. I've used the N-word. It's overwhelming. Okay, in, in one word, it's just it becomes very overwhelming at times. I'm not going to sit here and go, me, 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 like, 
Mom, I'm gonna speak fast. I feel myself being out of control. There is no control. <laughs> I totally lose control. I consider myself to be a very outgoing guy until I get home with my wife. <laughs> There's always controversy, confrontation, back talk. <laughs> I have some basic rules that are quite simple, I think. These rules are broken daily. It does not take me very long to become irrational or aggravated because it's the same thing over and over again. I don't like micromanaging their time. I can be a baby when I don't get my way. I just feel that my way is easier. All I ask in return is just a little respect from each and every one of them. Because I'm still pissed. Life moves forward, not backwards. That's a pretty fair representation of how things go, right? Absolutely. Yes. She doesn't listen. The kids don't listen. You said you have to go over and over and over it again. What is it she needs to do that she's not doing? Let's be specific. What does she need to do that she's not doing? She's not showing my children that I should be respected. She's showing my children that I'm being, that I'm to be disrespected. Okay. So she needs to tell them that you're the father, you're the man of the house, and you are to be respected, listened to, and, and followed. Pretty much. Okay. And so that's something she needs to do that she's not doing. What else does she need to do that she's not doing? She needs to be a little bit more tidy around the house. A little bit more tidy, or uh, maybe a, a lot, lot more maybe tidy. a lot more tidy. Yeah. I mean, let's be specific. You know, okay. I'm big on words. I'll, I'll let's be specific. Lot, I'll say a lot more tidy around the house. Okay, so if she was a better housekeeper, and she told the kids that they needed to be respectful to you, and she modeled that for the kids yeah. by being respectful to you. Those two things would be two big categories. Yes. Sherry says once uh, Eric starts ranting, it can last at least 45 minutes, and we have the audio to prove that. I don't want to rant and rave and bitch. I don't. I trust me, I don't. I don't wake up and go, you know what? I think I'm gonna bitch at my daughters today. I think I'm gonna call them all bitches. You guys think I'm an ass? Whatever. Yes, I am an ass. No. Let me rephrase that. Yes, I can be an ass. Okay, I'm slowing down. I am not from a foreign country. Say I'm slowing down. I just said I slowed down, and I didn't. She's still saying something. Talking and breathing. That's what they need to respect more no well you say you want them to respect you this is what you're doing to inspire that respect in in, in your wife and children it, it leads up to that it starts out here and it winds up here that went on for 45 minutes what the hell was that about this was when there was an um an accident with one of our daughters um, she had what he would call a boo-boo on her foot, and that's in fact what it was. It looked worse than it actually was, and it just needed to be cleaned. Um, so he was upset because I suggested not using alcohol or peroxide to clean her foot. Seriously, that's what happens when you all are talking about how to clean a foot? Yes. <laughs> she wanted my daughter to go to the hospital. Okay, Let, let's start from the beginning. She said, oh, no, she needed, she needed to go to the hospital for that when a brick fell, uh, it was like a rock, and it fell from maybe a foot and a half high and hit her toe, and she had a, a laceration or a bruise. Now, when I, the way I was raised, not that it's too much different than it is today, you put some, you put some anti, uh, antibiotic ointment on there, you clean it up with some peroxide, mm -hmm. and you bandage it up, you put a Band-Aid on it, and it's okay. No, she said that she needed to go to the hospital. But you <laughs> didn't do that. You brought her to my job. Because I wanted your opinion. As, as, but as, you're a parent. Why would you want my opinion, bring her to my job, and then not want to do what I suggest? Here's why. Because I felt if I didn't come to her, there, was, there would have been an altercation. Okay, we got to take a break. And when we come back, I have a pivotal threshold question for Eric. Sherry says that she and Eric fight over the smallest things, including eating in bed, what to pack in the kids' lunch, and even spilled milk. Eric admits their fights have landed him behind bars several times. But as we discovered while researching this show, he's been arrested more than 42 times. We're going to find out what else we discovered. And I'm going to ask this question when we come back.
gets paid. He yells, throws things. I have to get the last say because what I say goes. I've bitten him. I've scratched him. He ended up in the hospital. And later, I'm sure you're going to get into that into your little book. I don't believe you have all the facts together. You don't know what I have and what I've done. Now that he's gone there, we'll see what, what takes place. That sounds like a threat. Well, you should be used to that. You know how to threaten quite well. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. She has a dream. You want to travel the world and sing for the Lord. I would love to get a Grammy. They have a daughter. Danielle refers to her daughter as that child. My lawyer told me to give you that child. And he has custody. I felt like there was some abuse. We asked you for proof and you said, I really don't want to send you paperwork. Oh, I, I must have been very exhausted at that moment. That's Monday. We fuel each other's insanity. We argue at least three to four times a week. To me, in my eyes, that's just not how you do things. Okay. It could be the way I drive. It could be the way she drives. It could be about what she cooks and how she leaves the house. It, it doesn't matter. How am I confronting? You question me on every corner. You don't trust what I say to be true. No, I don't trust it because it's based off of your feelings and emotions. It has gotten to the point where he would hit me. I would hit him back. I've bitten him. I've scratched him. So Eric and I have fought so badly that he ended up in the hospital. I had a pocket knife and was blocking the door. But as soon as he raised his right hand, I popped that pocket knife right down into the side of his hand. Another time he shoved me up against the wall and I hit my head, resulting in a concussion. He yells, throws things. Once he got a, a stick and hits the oven door. I just did it to get their attention and let them know, look, dad is completely fed up with you guys not listening to me. I want to just do. That's what get things done. Just do. Just put your hands together and get done. He says that all the time. From time to time, I feel like I have to get the last say because what I say goes. I said there's a pivotal question that I want to ask you that's going to have a, a big determination on this on where this whole situation goes. You say that if they would listen to you and do it before you had to start yelling and screaming to get their attention, that things would be calmer. You say if she would be a better housekeeper, if she would model respect for the girls. All of these things that trigger the chaos and meltdown. If you know what's best if you know how to get this situation on track what needs to happen for this to be right if you're so smart why have you managed this off into the ditch so badly well for starters i didn't say i was so smart well no no <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a minute i hear you screaming up here about all the things they need to pay attention to you and that they need to respect you and follow you, then that you are claiming a leadership position. So if you're a good leader, if you're smart enough to get this thing going in the direction it needs to go, why is it so in the ditch? Dr. Phil, some of these things are just so common sense, basic, basic book. Exactly. Basic, you know, if it's so basic, why are you so inept at getting it done? That's, that's a very good question. Thank you. Phil. Well, how many times have you been arrested? Well, we're not talking about that. Yes. It's, some of that, some of that we, has... What do you mean, we are Some of it has relevance, some of it doesn't. Some You've of been it arrested doesn't, 42 times, 15 of them have been for domestic squabbles. Okay, does... Okay, you know what? The man always gets arrested first and then he asks questions later. Is it always on me? It's not always on me. Here's some of the domestic violence arrests. 02, touch or strike, battery. 07, battery, touch or strike. 09... This is where they say cause bodily harm or disability. You admit that you chased her around the house with a pair of scissors. Okay, hold. Can we hold for a second, please? I just got out of the shower. I was putting gauze bandage on my, my wound, and I had scissors already in my hand. So if you want to talk about me running around the house to go look for a pair of scissors, that is incorrect. And I, and I just reacted, Dr. Phil. I reacted. It wasn't intentional. Not to say that anything else was. It wasn't intentional when you held the scissors to her throat. They were already in my hand and I acted. Oh, I hate it when that happens I, by so accident. Do I. So do I, Dr. Phil. I'm not, 
It wasn't intentional. I did not run around the house looking through drawers for a pair of scissors. If I was clipping my toenails, would they say he had a pair of toenail clippers in his hands? Oh, my God. What was he going to do? Clip the hairs off her neck? I don't know. If you were threatening to gouge your eye out with him, then I suppose oh. it would be a problem. I love this woman. I really do love this woman. I've been with her 11 years. Through all of this, through all of that, I love this woman. And I'm willing to do everything I can. That's why I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, to okay. prove a point. All right, look, this isn't the debate. Okay. All right. <laughs> Same year, follow, harass, cyberstalk after an injunction. 09, contempt of court for violating the injunction. 10, contempt of court violating the injunction. 10, battery, touch or strike. 10, probation violation, aggravated assault with a weapon, no intent to kill. 11, cruelty towards a child. Eric admits you struck the daughter in the head with a brick. It was an accident. You say it was an it was accident. It was unintentional. You say it was an accident and unintentional, don't know whether it was or not. The point is, you weren't even supposed to be there. Correct. So you apparently are the smart guy, but you don't have sense enough to read a court order? I love my family and I want to try to do what I can to make are it better. Are you telling me that you didn't know that these I, rules said, do not contact this woman? I did know and I did bend them. As well did she, too. She you contacted didn't bend them. You violated them. It said, do not contact her. You contact her. They put <clears> your ass in jail. They said, you, you, went, you, you hit your daughter with a paver. Yeah. I understand what you're saying is you were cleaning and throwing here, and she walked into the path of it. I, I, I really am not saying you hit your daughter in the head with a brick on purpose. But you weren't supposed to be there at all. Right. Understood. Well, I, wanna, I got a few questions for Sherry. We're going to find out how Eric ended up getting stabbed in the hand when we come back, because he's not the only one that grabs a weapon here. you got to understand, this is all in front of children. In front of children, which is the only reason I'm here talking to these people. If it was just the two of them, a pox on both of them. But there are children caught in the middle of this crossfire, and that's why I'm here. We'll be right back. Those children have been taken away from you before for three years. Yes, they were. So you could throw a fit. I think she was enjoying the single life without the children. And you were enjoying jail. And later... I'm just trying to understand where you're thinking with your delusions that you're going to be able to correct something in a matter of one hour show. Your level of arrogance is staggering. I feel him kick. I can feel the whole fear. My daughter thinks she's pregnant, and she's not. She actually thinks her baby's Jesus. I am pregnant, and it is Jesus. You believe this baby's the son of God? Yes. The ultrasound was performed on Haley. You say, I'm giving birth. You don't believe that. You are not a lie detector test, and you need to shut it. Before I met him, my ex-husband, who was a priest, he had an affair with a massage therapist. Who's now his wife? This is the wonderful marriage that I apparently split oh. up, right? She needs to leave the room. Your son killed himself with a shotgun. Peter died under her roof. She doesn't appear to have any recognition of what she's done. Do you believe that she would want your son to be dead? Yes. You sorry son of a bitch! Me? Let me finish. You are my stepdad is a sick pervert. He would have me touch him in the tub. And your grandmother knew this. She was fluffing her hair 10 feet away. I never saw it. You know what you did. I did not molest you. You are willing to destroy my life. You have destroyed mine. I have very basic rules that will work if the children and the wife can just follow through with them. Number one, put things back where they belong. When you get home from school, change your school clothes into regular play clothes. Put your book bag and your belongings to your room as well. Charge your phones nightly because you want to have access to using them the following day. I'm going to clean this house. I don't want to see nobody. I want to in your rooms. Sherry says her three girls are old enough to understand and question both the verbal and physical fighting going on in their house. Now, one domestic incident in particular left Sherry's daughter with a fractured skull and all three girls being removed from the home for three years. 
Take a look. There was a restraining order on me, and I wasn't allowed to be on the premises of our home. And I went there to try to keep an eye on the children. The children were out playing uh, hide-and-go-seek. My oldest daughter was hiding behind a garbage can. At the same time, I was throwing pavers into a garbage can. And he let go of the rock at the same time she was running, and it hit her in the head. She had ended up in the hospital with a fractured skull. I was in panic! That's what I was! People panic! She I'm human! And you did the same thing! She comes first! No matter what! I bandaged your head up and cleaned it! It, it looked help. like a scrape! The children got taken, they got put into DCF, and I went to jail facing charges of aggravated child abuse. One time, Eric was accused of molesting my oldest daughter while she was in a foster home. They said her behavior was odd. Eric and I were 100% separated. We had absolutely zero contact with each other whatsoever. All of a sudden, she's saying, that didn't happen. I forgot. I don't know. I believe somebody planted this in my daughter's head because it, was, it wasn't true. None of that happened. When she started recanting her story, they dropped the charges. You are the mother of the three girls living in this home, one from a prior relationship, and then you have a set of twins. Yes. Let's be very clear. This yelling and screaming that we're hearing here is mental, emotional abuse. Yes, it is. Do, do you agree with that? Yes. So you agree you are mentally and emotionally abusing your children? I guess so. I'll wait. Think it through. No, I, it's not a matter of thinking through. It's, I'm, I'm not pleased <clears throat> that I have to admit to the fact that that's what's going on. That's unfortunate, and I'm sorry about that. You said something in your tape piece that is very important. Just one statement I want to hear. She comes first, no matter what. I finished your head up and cleaned it. It looked like a scrape. She comes first. The children come first. Yes. You have a duty. You have a duty. The children come first. And even now, I'm not even putting them first. No, you're not putting them first. Those children have been taken away from you before, have they not? They have. How long were they gone? <clears throat> they were gone <clears throat> almost a year. And then they were taken away from you for three years. Yes, they were. When you violated the order and went over there and hit your daughter in the head and fractured her skull with a brick. And your position was, hey, it was an accident. I'll, I'll give you that. No, I don't, I don't want it like that. I, I mean, I'll give you that it was an accident. I, I, have no, I, I have no reason to believe that you hit your daughter in the head with a brick on purpose. Well, that's why, Dr. Phil, that it didn't go to the extreme that it could have, because they realized in courts that it was <clears throat> simply an accident. Yeah, and you were in jail for how long? A year. Yeah, for that accident. Yes. And what you were in jail for was violating the order to be there to begin with. And falsifying information to a law enforcement officer. Right. And the falsification was that you lied about hitting her with a brick to begin with, right? Correct, because I knew you I said wasn't it was, supposed to be there. It, because you said it was happened by my her son. sister, or no, your, her son, son. Yep. Uh, and not you. You didn't know what happened. No. And their, their thought was, you need to know what happened, mm -hmm. and you didn't know exactly. what happened. And in fact, he was there when he shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So you went to jail. The children were taken for not one, not two, but three years. Why did it take three years to get those children back? Because neither one of, well, I can't speak for Eric. I wasn't completely working my case plan. I was very combative with <clears throat> the case workers. There were more than one. I was very combative with my attorney. I was very combative with the therapist that was coming to the home. I was deliberately non-compliant for, I would say, the first year of the case plan. And tell me why. Because I was angry. And <clears throat> I didn't think that they deserved to know the truth. And it took that long for me to realize that it had nothing to do with them. So you put your anger ahead 
of the agenda necessary to get your children back. I sure did. So they were gone for not one, not two, but three years so you could throw a fit. Yes. I think she was enjoying the single life without the children at the time as well. And you were enjoying jail. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe you have all the facts together. You don't know what I have and what I don't. Because you've already cracked open a can of worms. He just called my bluff. Maybe you guys will tune in when I do a reality show inside my house. God, you are delusional. I am the only man in the house and that I don't get any respect from my daughters or my wife. I believe that my daughters have a lack of trust with their father because the wife doesn't trust me, so they don't trust me as well. I feel like there's four hormonal women, young ladies, attacking me, and I am one man. I need to be understood. Father knows best. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've looked through all this. I, I can actually understand to some degree why you do what you do. I think you have zero impulse control. Uh, I think you're uh, somewhat delusional because you say you yell a little bit. You don't yell a little bit. You know, when you fight about everything, you're fighting about nothing. I agree, Dr. Phil. You make excuses for him? I have. You said Eric gave me a concussion, didn't press charges. I called the sex abuse hotline because he raped me repeatedly for six weeks. You were 5150 and then you remained in the relationship. You say, I overreacted and stabbed Eric in the hand because I thought he was going to hit me. Then you made up a story at the hospital so the police wouldn't get involved. You say he chased you around the house with a pair of scissors and held them to your neck, filed an injunction, but then you dropped the charges. Eric hit my daughter in the head with a brick and fractured her skull. He said it was the daughter's fault for not watching where she was going. My daughter accused Eric of sexual abuse. You allowed Eric to move back into the home. You say, I initially believed my daughter's story about the sexual abuse, but then you said the story was fishy and you believe that Eric's 100% innocent. You say, Eric pushed me over and you bit your tongue, but then you refused to fill out a statement or paperwork. Uh, pressing charges is useless, you say. You say he punched you in the face with his fist. Yes. You called the police intending to press charges. He fled the scene before they arrived. You didn't pursue it. No further action was taken. What are you two doing? <laughs> what the hell are you two doing? It's not fair to my children, our children. She comes from her type of background of abuse, and I do as well. And I'm sure you're going to get into that into your little book. Um, <laughs> but uh, some things, you're, you have some facts on some things, and some other things are you know, either myth or uh, fictional. Uh, I don't believe you have all the facts together. You don't know what I have and what I don't. All right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you can't tell me more about my life than I know. Because <clears throat> you've already cracked open a can of worms. I mean, I know he just called my bluff. Now that he's gone there, we'll see what, what takes place. And then that sounds like a threat, and that's not helpful. It's, it's not a threat, as long as there's consequences behind it, and there's... That still sounds like a threat. I know. Well, you should be used to that. You know how to threaten quite well. If you say so. All I ask is for some simple, simple, basic textbook stuff at home. At Do we present. even know what simple, basic textbook stuff There's is? There's a lot of people in society that can tell, but agree with me on the terms. apparently we're not behaving like a lot of people in society. So are you here to defend what you guys are doing? No. Maybe you guys will tune in when I do a reality show inside my house and you can uh, answer me on, my, on, the, on site to tell me what you think my differences should be in the household. God, you are delusional. You're, this isn't about a reality show. This is about acknowledging what you can do to change the situation to improve what's going on. Because if you don't, you're going to continue the pattern you're in, which is going to jail and losing your children. You can talk about my little book. Let me tell you what. You, you haven't met anybody in your life that has worked as hard on your behalf as I have. Well, we're, we're, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. I'm just trying to understand where you're thinking with your delusions, I'm going to say this, that that you're going to be able to correct something that's been going on now for 11 years in a matter of one hour show. Mm. You know, I would need 10 of these.
to contain what you don't know about what's going on here. It's very telling to hear you talk because your level of arrogance is staggering because what you should be doing is asking a question that I haven't heard come out of your mouth yet. I'm not a bad guy, guys. I, I, I have a big heart. I can hear advice all day long. Would you like to know what I think? I would absolutely like to know what you think. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to tell us. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Does his ex care more about her dream? You want to sing for the Lord. Than her daughter? Danielle refers to her daughter as that child. My lawyer told me to give you that child. That's Monday. My relationship with Eric reminds me of my childhood abuser. It mixes a lot of anger and love. There were starting to be some sexual interactions until I would say the age of 19 or 20. There was also some physical abuse. He would beat me up and then after he would give me a hug and he would say, you know I love you. My husband's pretty much the same way. He's the kind of person that will talk about you. You just spent the entire day telling me I'm a Now you wanna lay in bed and touch me? You know, I said before the break that you seem very arrogant, and I haven't heard you ask the question that you should be asking. And that is, what can I do to improve myself in such a way that I inspire everybody in my family to a healthier level of functioning? That should be the question you should be asking. You can't control her. Understood. You can't control your children. Only person you control is you. And you haven't asked that question because you're busy defending and justifying the indefensible behavior that you are exhibiting on an ongoing basis. I can hear advice all day long. It's just a matter of how I apply it to my everyday life. That's a problem that I'm having. I'm not a, I'm not a bad guy, guys. I, I, I have a big heart. I do have a very big heart. Um, when Sherry and I first got married, I told her to bring all of her children into the relationship that I would try I to do the best that I could and it's not like I was just handed a do-it-yourself book and say here you go here's a marriage here's five six kids uh here's your here's your new house figure it out would you like to know what I think I would absolutely like to know what you think <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna tell us not necessarily <laughs> the, the first thing I you've said that I agree with is that you're not a bad guy. I think you are terribly misguided. You're too ignorant to recognize when somebody's trying to help you instead of judge you. Um, you, you see, only thing we can do is what we know. And we do the best we can with what we know at the time. And you have never one time in your life had a decent role model to demonstrate to you the proper role of the man in the family. You didn't have it when you were growing up. That's for damn sure. No. And you've lived kind of a... a a marginalized life so you've never been around a really healthy family or a healthy couple you, you've never had anyone to give you a north star a, a, a compass to to follow all you're doing is just making it up based on the best reasoning you can do at the time I mean how else can we expect you to behave. I mean, nobody's ever told you any different. Nobody ever taught you peace and love and nurturance. And it's the generational legacy, so you, you carry that forward. But you need to learn the role of the man in the family. The role of the man in the family is to be a provider, a protector, a leader, and a teacher. Those are the things that a man is supposed to do in a family. That's the role of the man in a family. You don't know that. Nobody's ever taught you what those roles are or how to do them. And that needs to happen. Is there room for change? 
end or fix. Oh, hell, it's got to get better. You can't fall off the floor. This show is almost over. start taping a new one. You're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you want to watch a live studio taping of the Dr. Phil show, go to drphil.com for free tickets or call 323-461-PHIL. The, the fact that these children have two adults in their lives that are damaged, both of you are damaged, why you have procreated is unfortunate because you didn't prepare yourselves to do it. Parent is both a noun and a verb. Mm -hmm. Having a baby, okay, so you're now a parent, that's a noun. Parent is also a verb. To parent is an active thing to do. You can become a parent by having a child, but you have to parent by being active in doing that. And you don't know how to do that. Neither one of you know how to do that. Both of you have a very damaged personal truth. It is whatever it is that you, at the absolute uncensored core of your being, have come to believe about you. Now think about this. Uh, this, is, this is a simple sentence, but think about it. It is whatever you, not somebody else, but you, at the absolute uncensored core, by uncensored core, that means not what you put out on your social mass to the world. Uncensored means what you, no kidding, say to yourself, believe about you. It's what you believe about yourself. And if you don't do what it takes to heal, that personal truth, the problem is you will generate the results you think you deserve. If you believe you have a damaged personal truth, you will generate the results you think you deserve. And you will create for your family, you will create for your children the results you think you deserve. Is there room for change and or fix? Oh, hell, it's got to get better. You can't fall off the floor. <laughs> right? No, I just, I just want to believe that it's not too late. It's not. For my it, family look, and, and my daughters and so forth. No, I just want to believe it's not, not too, too late. late. It is not too late. <clears throat> but you have to get deadly serious about it. This, this yelling and screaming, there's got to be order in the house. I didn't like the way they were doing things. Grow up, woman. You have children and you have a duty to those children. If social services is stepping on your toes, tough. You gotta do what you gotta do to get yourself prepared to get those children 
back with their mother. Those children belong with their parents, and their parents need to be worthy of having those children. You two need to calm down or get a divorce before dark today. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, life strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Your sarcastic comment about my little book in one hour, I'm going to change your life. I've never been under the impression that I do eight-minute cures up here in a segment or one-hour cures up here in people's lives. What I try to do is give you a serious wake-up call and point you in the right direction, perhaps for the first time in your life. Our relationship doesn't end when this show is over, it begins when this show is over. What I want to do with the two of you is first, you need something to disrupt your pattern. And then you need some ongoing, very specialized care to come in and redesign the paradigm of your family. You need some real serious support for redefining this family because if you don't, those children are going to be gone and gone for good. I am going to recommend that you go to OnSite. It is a program that I have used a lot. It is the leader in intensive workshops and treatment specializing with people that have been through trauma people that deal with mental issues, people that have been through all kinds of chaos in their life, and what they do is hit the reset button. And then, once that's done, and that can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to whatever, and then once that's done, then we have to have very strong family support to come in and shepherd this along on a day-to-day -day basis, help these children and help you guys to live in a tranquil situation. So that's what I recommend you start with. And it means calling time out, putting yourself in the shop for a period of time. How am I going to fit that in a schedule such as my work schedule and providing for my children? I, I do want to do this. Granted, I do want to do this, but how do I fit that into the schedule that I have that I'm doing to support my family? How can you not? You fit jail time in your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a comedian too, guys. <laughs> if, you, if you can fit jail time in your schedule, you can fit three or four weeks uh, of being healthy. But that's, that's a legitimate question and a legitimate problem to be worked through, and we'll, we'll okay. work with you on that. All right, I'm going to leave it there. I want to thank my guests today, and a special thanks to OnSite. Uh, they are top-notch. Uh, we're going to follow up with these folks and let you know how things go. We'll see you next time. Really, let's do this. Let's get this done.